Hello and welcome students. Um, a couple housekeeping keeping announcements before we get started. Welcome to our virtual college fair and thank you for joining us today. Um, at any point, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to ask presenters anything. Uh, your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Please sign up for more sessions. This is just one of the many different ones happening. And the presentation is being recorded and will be available in about a week at the same website where you registered, which is StriveScan. And so now I will turn it over to our presenters and East Carolina University, you are first. All right, everyone. I hope you are all doing well. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Allie Hortonberry. I am the Virginia, DC, and Maryland counselor for both freshmen and transfer students that are interested in ECU. Um, and I will have my information at the end if you have any questions. So I'm going to go ahead and get into some quick facts here. For our student experience, you can know a little bit about our institution. So East Carolina is a part of the UNC system public universities um, here in North Carolina. We are a large institution. We come in this year at 28,651 enrolled students. Um, however, even though we are a large institution, we are able to maintain a 19 to 1 student faculty ratio and an average class size of 28 students. So you're going to be getting that small college experience in the classroom with direct access to your professors and other resources. We also um, come in at about 90% of our students coming from in the state of North Carolina and 10% coming out. Most of that 10% also comes from Virginia, so you'll be in good company here. We have over 500 student clubs and organizations that will include 15 campus ministries and 38 Greek organizations. And for campus living, we have 15 residence halls spread over three different neighborhoods. That's going to be Central, which is our main campus, College Hill, and West End. We have two dining halls on our campus with six quick stop convenience markets and 23 national names like Chick-fil-A. We have the only Raising Cane's in the state of North Carolina on our campus. There's a few different Starbucks, a Chili's, and lots more as far as dining goes. We also have a variety of flexible meal plans for each and every student to get exactly what they need out of their dining experience and their campus living experience at ECU. For academics, to give you an idea, we have 84 different bachelor's degrees that you can choose from, 70 master's programs for after your bachelor's degree, and 18 doctoral programs. Our top programs uh, for our undergraduate degrees include nursing. We actually graduate the most nurses in the state of North Carolina. And um, right after that, we have management, marketing, psychology, and elementary education. We are also the only school in the state of North Carolina that has a dental school, a medical school, and a college of engineering all at the same institution. That's at any school in North Carolina, both public and private. So if you're not sure where East Carolina is, I've provided this nice map right here um, to give you a little bit of context. We have all of our major East Coast cities there. Um, so if you're familiar with any of those and maybe where Greenville is in relation to them, this is a great map for you. In Greenville, we have our main campus, our athletics facilities, our health sciences campus, and our West Research campus. But we also have a small little campus in Manio, um, which is in the Outer Banks. It's about two hours from Greenville and that houses our integrated coastal studies program. So if you're interested in like coastal wildlife, coastal ecology, you'll spend a little bit of time probably in Manio, North Carolina. For athletics, we have 16 different NCAA Division I sports, and we participate in the AAC or the American Athletic Conference. We also give students free tickets for regular season home games, which is really cool. You can see here Dowdy Ficklin Stadium is our football stadium, and um, that's why it's so packed. All of our students like to go to um, the football games in the fall. 
Okay, so the most important thing that I need to go over is how to apply to ECU if you're interested. So, um, of course, our application process requires that we need your application, which includes an essay. We'll need your official high school transcripts to be sent from your counseling office. Something that's big, I've included test scores here. However, every school in the UNC system has actually waived the test score requirement for 2021. And then if you're dual enrolled at a college, we'll need the college transcript sent directly from that institution. There is a $75 application fee. However, we do have fee waivers available for both transfer and freshman students in our office. And you can always contact our office or me specifically to get that process started. I've added some dates here at the bottom. So our application opened up on August 1st. It's currently open now. For our honors college, um, you'll need to apply to the university, your general admission to the university, you'll need to apply by November 11th to be eligible and have your admission admissions decision by this December 16th date. Um, in addition to that, for merit-based scholarships, you'll need to apply by December 15th to the institution to be eligible for merit-based scholarships by January 15th. And then you have by March 1st to get everything in. Um, that's when our application closes. Um, something that's really important is staying connected with us. So we have our ECU admissions, uh, social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. There's also going to be general, you know, social media for the institution itself. There's going to be specific social media for programs, um, athletic teams, so on and so forth. You can stay connected with as well if you just take a little search to Instagram. That's our general admissions email address there. Um, so if you have supplemental documents or questions that you want to ask, um, you can send them all to the admissions email. Email. And something really important, we are offering in-person and virtual tours, live info sessions, and student panels on our visit page and our open houses on the 18th if you're interested. To contact me, this is all my contact information. Again, I'm your counselor for Virginia, D.C., and Maryland, and my name is Allie. And the last thing I'll leave you guys with is Go Pirates. Thank you so much, Allie. And up next, we have St. Olaf. Hello, everybody. Share my screen. Okay. So I am also the representative at St. Olaf who works with all students from the DMV area, and I'm super excited to be talking with you all today. To start, I will tell you a little bit about our location um, and some of its benefits. So we are in Minnesota, and if you're thinking about where St. Olaf is in Minnesota, we are in Northfield and that's located 45 minutes south of the Twin Cities. So when you're at St. Olaf, you're in relatively close proximity to a major metropolitan area, which I think is great for um, maybe like some fun activities. You can go to a Twins game, you can go to the Mall of America, um, but also great for internships, job shadowing, connecting with alumni, that kind of thing. Um, but the town of Northfield is also really great. It's definitely a college town. We have 3,000 students at St. Olaf. Our neighbor in Northfield, Carleton College, has 2,000, and together we make up a fourth of the 20,000 folks who are in Northfield. But really, when you're on campus, the majority of what you are doing is going to happen right there um, on campus. We're pretty contained. Everything is sort of up on a hill. So when you're there, I think you really feel like you're very much immersed in the world of St. Olaf. Um, and there's a lot going on that we'll talk about. So at St. Olaf, we really believe that a liberal arts education is hugely beneficial and that students get a lot out of this very holistic approach to academics. So when you're at St. Olaf, you will, of course, get depth in whatever major you choose. You have to declare that major by the end of your sophomore year. But really all throughout your time at St. Olaf, you're going to have time to continue to explore academic interests outside of your major. Some students choose to do that in the form of a double major, but many just choose to continue taking a wide variety of electives. And we really believe that this allows your interests to keep organically developing. Um, I think a cool outcome of this is if you're looking at the majors at St. Olaf, there's a section on our website where you can look at what people with those majors have done career-wise. Um, and the variety is huge. So I think a liberal arts education really prepares you to go off and do um, a huge number of things. Something else that's a little bit unique about our academics is we have a J term, which is a one month term where you take one class. Um, and this is a very popular time for students to study abroad, which I'll talk more about in just a minute. The campus community, I think is a huge asset at St. Olaf and something many students come 
seeking. Um, is that really kind of tight knit community feel? Um, part of this is our size. And I think part of this is the fact that so many students live on campus all four years because it really allows students to just take advantage of so much. Um, academics, of course, but also extracurricular activities. St. Olaf students are really involved outside of class. Um, and then also just socially, like you can see, for example, here in the cafeteria, students um, very often share meals together. I think they use it, they use it as a great time to connect. Um, and also our food is ranked seventh. So I think it helps that people enjoy eating the food as well. Study abroad is something we are known for. For the last 10 years, we are the liberal arts college that has sent abroad the greatest percentage of our students. And um, so it is definitely something a lot of people take advantage of. Um, as far as fitting it into your schedule, you can study abroad on a program that has to do with your major. You could tap into another interest. There's a lot of ways to work it in and still graduate in four years. And all financial aid and scholarships that you get transfer to the cost of these programs. So we hope that that will make it accessible for as many students as possible. The fine arts, also something that St. Olaf is very invested in. Um, the biggest thing I think being is that our major programs are reputable. We're one of the few liberal arts colleges in the country that's accredited in all four areas. But at the same time, there's really nothing that majors can do that non-majors can't do. So if you're someone who's saying or feeling like, you know, you want to be pre-med, you want to study something totally unrelated to the fine arts, but you want it to really be a meaningful part of your experience, um, St. Olaf is a great place because you can do that through our choral ensembles, theater production, dance companies, um, whatever you want. Lastly, I'll talk a little bit about our career center, um, really honing in on what I think is unique or um, particularly valuable to students about the Career Center, and that is that we really are focused on four-year programming. So we, of course, want you to get a job after you graduate, um, but we really want you to spend time thinking intentionally about what do you want your career to look like, what kind of impact do you want to make in the world, what is fulfilling for you, um, and we want to set you up for success in the best way possible. So there are a lot of resources. I could probably give a 45 minute presentation alone about the Piper Center, um, but just know that there's a lot of resources there for you to take advantage of. Lastly, I'll just touch a little bit on our application process. So we have really almost every single type of application deadline to choose from these days. We've got early decision, we've got early action. Um, and then as far as our application is concerned, you can see the list there. I would definitely highlight that we are test optional this year and also indefinitely after this year. Um, and we are holistic, so we don't have minimum requirements. We will review um, whatever you send us in the context of the environment that you are coming from. And lastly, we have many different types of aid. We offer three different types of merit scholarships and we meet 100% of demonstrated need. Um, yeah, so thank you all so much. It was great to chat with you. We have a lot of other virtual opportunities that we offer. So definitely check out our website for that. And I look forward to connecting um, with many of you in the future. Awesome, thanks for your time. And up next we have Hamden Sydney College. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, what is up, guys? My name is Marshall McClung. I currently uh, serve as Associate Dean of Admission and Digital Media at Hampton Sydney College. I'm a 2011 graduate of the school, um, so I've got a very deep passion for the place. Uh, I love this college to death. Um, there is no way that I could possibly begin to tell you everything you need to know about Hampton Sydney, um, especially not in six minutes. So I would encourage you all, if you want to learn more after my presentation, head over to our website. Um, I'm not really going to go over application details. I'm not really going to go over the basic stuff that you can find on our website. But again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, so I want to start real quickly just with a couple quick facts uh, about the college, about our history. We are the 10th oldest college in the nation. Um, we were founded in 1775. And when we were founded, we were founded as a college for men. Uh, we have remained a college for men. And in fact, we are one of three remaining colleges for men in the country. We're located in the heart of Virginia. If you think of Virginia as a dartboard, we are the bullseye. We're about two to two and a half, maybe three hours from every major city in the state. If you want to get to the mountains, they're two hours away. If you want to get to the beach, it's about two and a half um, down in North Carolina up to D.C. We're in a very ideal spot, but we are tucked away in the middle of the woods. We are located in Farmville, Virginia. 
When we were founded, our mission was to form good men and good citizens in an atmosphere of sound learning, and we have not changed our mission in 245 years. So let me tell you a little bit more about us. Um, I think the biggest thing at Hampton Sydney is that we're obviously going to teach you a lot. We have a very rigorous academic curriculum. We're going to teach you how to write well and speak well, but at the forefront of our education is our alumni network. We think that who you know uh, can serve you very well when you graduate four years later. Somebody like this guy. This is Kirk Zambetti. Uh, Kirk works for a small little cooler company you may have heard of, um, Yeti Coolers. He's the senior VP of sales at Yeti. Um, or maybe somebody like Ronald Johnson or Ron John, as I knew him. He was a classmate of mine. Um, Ron John's currently the global GM for basketball for Converse sneakers, oh, which is pretty cool. Um, this guy, Rob Citrone. Rob is a billionaire with a capital B, um, just gave a $6 million gift to the college a couple weeks ago to help implement our experiential learning program. Um, in addition to owning his own hedge fund, He's a part owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is pretty cool. Um, this guy's Lane Ford. Y'all might be watching this on an Apple product. Maybe you're watching it on an iPhone. Uh, Lane is part of the reason the iPhone exists the way it does. He's a creative director at Apple. Or maybe Warren Thompson. Uh, Warren hooks us up in the dining hall. He is the CEO and founder of the second largest minority owned food provider in the country, Thompson Hospitality. Um, and finally, you know, if you're a golf fan, I'm not an athletic guy in the least, but uh, this guy, Jared Ficklin, another classmate of mine, uh, Jared produced the most recent Tiger Woods documentary for the Golf Channel. Um, he started out at ESPN, but that's where he is now. The reason I tell you all about all these guys is that these are, these are just a handful of our alumni who are doing really cool things. And again, there are tons more like them who are gonna be looking out for you. According to the Princeton Review, we have the second best alumni network in the country. I've seen it work for myself and I've seen it work for you know, all of my other classmates um, and fellow alumni. Uh, part of our curriculum is the Compass program. This is our experiential learning program. We've always been good at doing hands-on learning, but we are really making an effort to make sure that all of our guys get that experience, whether that's through study abroad opportunities, um, internships, or research on campus. That program has really helped our students excel once they graduate. Additionally, I think a program that is entirely unique to Hampton Sydney is our rhetoric program. We are going to teach every single one of our students how to write well, how to speak well, and how to communicate effectively. We require that all students take rhetoric, and we make sure that when you graduate, you go into the workforce not having to be taught how to write an email or how to write a thank you note. Our guys know that stuff when they enter, and I think they have a leg up above the rest of the competition because of that. About a quarter of our guys participate in Division Three athletics. We are in the ODAC, the Old Dominion Athletic Conference, so we compete with some other schools in the state. Um, but most of the guys who aren't playing are playing an IM or a club sport. So athletics are, are pretty big at Hampton Sydney. Whether you are cheering on, uh, you know, your fraternity brothers from the sideline, or if you're on the football field, lacrosse field, or the basketball court in Kirby Fieldhouse, um, our guys are pretty involved when it comes to athletics. Those guys who aren't might participate a lot in the outdoors. Again, we're located in central Virginia, so we encourage our guys to get outside often, especially during COVID-19. Our guys have been able to experience our campus a whole lot more than I think they would have in the past. We have a high ropes course. We've got two and a half miles of biking trails. We've got three ponds on campus that students can fish, um, and then a ton of other nature around the campus and surrounding areas. I think the thing that really sums up Hampton Sydney best and makes us the place that we are is the sense of brotherhood. A lot of small schools are gonna give you a sense of community, that's true. But I think the bond that you form with your brothers at Hampton Sydney is one that doesn't just last four years, it lasts a lifetime. Um, so whether it's the day you show up to do community service or the day that you graduate, you are going to have that bond with guys. <clears throat> we do have fun, girls are allowed on campus, everyone always wonders that. Um, but I'll tell you guys this, go online, apply, it takes a couple minutes to put in an application. We have a, a virtual tour on YouTube, check that out, come see us. Um, this is my contact info, do a quick screenshot if you want. Um, that's my cell phone number up there. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed, have a good night, thanks. Great, thank you. Up next, we have Hamden Sydney College. I think you meant John Tyler, but 
Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen. All right, so um, I'm Jordan Meadows. Um, I'm the outreach coordinator at John Tyler. I, um, <clears throat> at John Tyler, our vision statement is a success story for every student. And through all the supports and resources at Tyler I'm going to talk about today, you'll see how our vision statement is something that we truly believe in. And we do find success um, for every student. So Tyler at a glance, um, we've got two campus locations, one in Midlothian, Virginia, and one in Chester, which are just around the city of Richmond. Um, we've got over 14,000 students enrolled at Tyler, which may sound like a lot, but with all the options and pathways at Tyler, um, we're able to cultivate smaller class sizes with about 15 students per class on average. And as I mentioned, we have a lot of different pathways and options. We have over 75 programs that include associate degrees, transfer specific associate degrees. And for those um, who don't want to go on to a four year school, we've got a lot of trade programs designed to prepare students for the workforce and skilled trade jobs that are in high demand. So within those 75 programs, here are a few of them that are the most popular at Tyler. These technical programs teach um, skills for entry level jobs, um, which are um, which when you come out of those jobs, you come out with um, qualifications for entry level jobs with salary, salaries ranging from 40 to $55,000 a year. Um, these programs are great for students who don't want that traditional classroom setting and um, want to work with their hands, learn the skill and join the workforce um, in little as a year or two. Um, these transfer degrees are some of the most popular at Tyler. They're designed to transfer to a four-year institution after completion, and you'll receive your associate degrees and your credits will transfer to that four-year school of your choice. Additionally, at Tyler, we've got the guaranteed admissions agreements with all the four-year state schools in Virginia, like JMU, UVA, VCU, VSU, ODU, Virginia Tech, and many more. Um, the agreements are contracts between the community colleges and the four-year schools um, that outline certain course requirements, GPA requirements, and once you satisfy those requirements, you have a guaranteed acceptance into that school. Um, that's actually what I did. Um, after I left high school, I got a guaranteed acceptance from a community college and I went to UVA and that's where I earned my bachelor's degree. Um, and then these career majors are geared towards joining the workforce after completion. Some of them are certifications and then some of them are associate degrees. Given that they're not designed to transfer to a four-year school, that doesn't mean that it's not possible. Um, they just may require some additional four-year, um, some additional requirements from that four-year school. Um, but if you want to see more of the programs we've got, visit um, catalog.jccc.edu or scan that QR code. Um, some of the supports, um, we go back to a success story for every student. Not only are all of our professors and faculty highly involved and invested in helping our students reach their goals, but at Tyler, we have many supports and resources to ensure success. Um, for example, the ARC is a, um, the academic resource center where you, all students get free tutoring. Um, they also have um, options for you to make a study plan where they'll take all your syllabi and plan out your schedule and all your outside commitments and know so you'll know when you need to be studying for classes, getting ready for tests, things like that. Um, and then also we've got libraries or a lot more than books. Uh, they host workshops on a wide variety of topics. You can reserve technology and study rooms and equipment, and they also have free printing. Um, and then career services. The point of coming to college is to eventually get a job. Career services will um, help you find a job while you're at Tyler. They'll help you find um, internships within your programs of study, and they'll even provide a free interview outfit if you do not have one um, for an interview. Student life, um, student activities, host events like pick up and play games on the quad between classes, virtual events like cooking tutorials and virtual spirit week. Um, each semester we've got musicals and plays. Um, you don't have to be a part of that theater program or theater classes um, in order to participate in those. Hold on, sorry, okay. Um, and then we also have intramural sports, basketball, soccer and volleyball, just to name a few. 
Um, but applying to Tyler is easy. There's, uh, it's a free application, no essays, no SAT requirement, and no letters of recommendation. Um, if you have more questions or want any help through the application, you can text me or email at info at jtcc.edu. Um, and thank you for uh, joining us tonight. Thank you for your time. Um, that was awesome. And up next, we have Living Arts College. Hope everyone is doing well. My name is Bernard Allen uh, from Living Arts College in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, we are uh, an art school. And of course, we've been here since uh, 1991. Uh, Raleigh is the capital city of North Carolina. It's centrally located uh, between uh, Richmond, Virginia, uh, and Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, right slap dab in the middle. Uh, we're an art-based school, and so um, this is a, a quick overhead shot of our campus. We've got uh, less than 500 students. Uh, of course, we've got uh, on-campus hall uh, living facilities as well. Uh, we do an off-campus option uh, also. Uh, we believe in what's called applied creativity, uh, where our students through uh, uh, hands-on learning uh, and also in project-based education, they're able to apply their skills uh, that they've learned here uh, in six different areas of which they can receive a Bachelor of Art degree. Uh, animation and game design uh, is our first program. Uh, and as you can see, we've got a part of that program, 3D modeling, visual effects, uh, motion graphics, game design. Uh, we also have internet um, design uh, in virtual reality using the Oculus Rift, uh, augmented reality using the HoloLens and the HoloLens uh, two. We're located 20 minutes from Epic Games, the creators of a game you may have heard of called Fortnite. Uh, we also have graduates who work out at Epic Games as well. Uh, we do audio production and design in which students learn through Pro Tools software, uh, which is produced by a company called Avid. We are Avid and Pro Tools sponsored school. Our students are certified in Pro Tools software. Uh, and they uh, can mix and master uh, music, uh, sound design. Uh, they get experience in sound technician, Foley artist, uh, and they learn a wide range of skills that are used in the world of music production, soundtracks, uh, TV, motion pictures, and of course, in professional grade studios. Uh, we also have a film school, uh, digital filmmaking, we call it here at Living Arts from script to screen, uh, where our students develop scripts, uh, beginning with uh, 60 second shorts as freshmen. Uh, and they, that leads up to their senior year in which they show a full length uh, production. Uh, of course, they learn cinema story production, distribution. Uh, of course, there are uh, other designs that are important, uh, especially visual effects. Uh, they learn the entire filmmaking and TV production process. Uh, we also offer a program called Interactive Media and Design, which is graphic design, broadcast design, a little bit of motion graphics. It deals with uh, those of you who are out there that may be taking a course called Multimedia Design uh, at your high school uh, or digital media. Uh, and that involves uh, Adobe's uh, Creative Cloud, Photoshop, uh, uh, InDesign, and Illustrator. Uh, learning to become graphic designers, uh, website designers as well, uh, some audio and video uh, editing. Those components are included uh, in that interactive media, along with social media design. Uh, we have a world of, of internet capabilities. Uh, social media is all around us. Of course, we teach you those advertising and marketing concepts uh, that enable you to go into the job market even in social media. We offer interior design. Uh, we call it total interior design. Of course, it's project focused uh, and it's centered around Revit computer aided drafting, along with building codes, uh, studio business practices. Uh, they also uh, do hand designs <clears throat> and along with uh, creating um, 
um, blueprints and printing those out, uh, doing uh, commercial and residential designs uh, in the world of interior design. If you're interested in interior design, there, uh, there is an app where you can do uh, some project creations called Home Design and Design Home. Uh, we also do photography, digital photography. If you have a digital camera, uh, you have a photography class in high school, uh, we teach you not just to do a wonderful professional grade photography, but we add graphic design to that as well, so that you're able to do uh, photography and some illustration uh, in the digital world as well. And so our bachelor degree program is, uh, is four years, that's completed in three years. Our students uh, go year round. They go 10 weeks at a time with a two week, two to three week break uh, in a four quarter system. And this is just a couple of photographs of on the inside our campus. We have our own uh, on campus theater uh, that is a movie theater and concert venue. Uh, of course, we have uh, two professional grade music studios. And of course, um, just some, some photos of what we do here from film to, to music uh, to photography, graphic design, uh, interactive media, and uh, interior design. Uh, so, hey, we do not um, require the SAT, but we do require uh, portfolio submission. Uh, take a quick picture of that information. Send us your portfolios to that uh, email address. As well, I'm Bernard Allen, Director of Admissions here at Living Arts College. Please take a photo of that right quick, snap it fast, uh, do a quick screenshot. That's my information. Email me. I will be glad to answer all of your questions. Thank you. Thank you as well. And last but not least, we have William and Mary. Hello, everyone. My name is Christian Burnett. I'm going to spend our, our last little bit of time here going over just a little bit about William and Mary. Um, so thank you for, for sticking with us and thank you for joining us. Um, now what you're seeing here is our Wren building. This is the oldest academic building still in use in America. Uh, this building has survived uh, two different wars, three different fires, at this point three different epidemics. Uh, and I think it's a, a true testament to the resiliency of the William & Mary community. Um, we are the second oldest college in the nation, you know, over 320 years old. So we've had plenty of time to learn and grow and maybe fail and get back up and try again. Uh, and that's something that we will continue to do. You know, not only are you going to think of us as a historic institution, uh, but you're also going to think of us as a, a university kind of paving the way into the future as well. Uh, now at William & Mary, we are uh, what I like to call a, a smaller but mid-sized institution with about 6,500 undergraduates. Uh, about 3,000 graduates or so, but don't worry, it's not like you're competing against those grad students for internships or research opportunities or uh, FaceTime with a professor. Uh, really, all of our programs are catered, implemented, designed for you all, the undergraduate. Uh, now, we are a public institution, meaning we have certain numbers mandated to us by the state of Virginia. Uh, one of those is that our students have to come about two-thirds from Virginia, one-third out of state. Uh, so the good news is for all of you Virginia residents, uh, you really don't need to worry uh, about uh, feeling alone on campus or feeling separated. Uh, and even if you are coming from us uh, from over, you know, out of state or anywhere else in the world, um, don't worry, you know, even if you're an international student just taking high school classes in Virginia, um, you know, this is not a suitcase school, not a bubble school. Our students are hanging out on campus every weekend. Um, now, something that's pretty unique about William and Mary and something that I think kind of sets us apart from other institutions uh, is our faculty and our staff. Our professors truly go, you know, leaps and bounds above the call of duty to make sure that our students have everything whether that's, again, a missed lecture that they need one-on-one -on -one for, whether that's uh, making sure that they have extra time for an exam or anything like that, our professors are gonna go that extra mile to make sure you feel supported during your entire academic journey at William & Mary. Now, a little bit more about our academics. Um, we are a liberal arts institution, meaning we want you to have a broad understanding of all academic areas, not just your particular major. Uh, and in addition, we want you to have a global perspective. Uh, for that reason, we are the number one public university in the nation for study abroad. Uh, we send about 75% of our students somewhere before they graduate. 
Uh, that might include Machu Picchu that you see pictured here, or that might include Shanghai or Cape Town. Or maybe you want to study polar diversity in the ice caps of Antarctica. Uh, whatever it is that you might be interested in, we probably have that program for you. And if you're feeling really bold, you can do two years abroad with our joint degree program with the University of St. Andrews in Scotland. Uh, you'll spend about two years with us, two years with them, and essentially graduate with a degree from each institution. Now, as you'll see here, uh, research is also pretty big on our campus, and that's not just in bio or chem or psychology. That's happening in all fields, both on campus and off. Um, you know, just this past semester, our history students were able to do their own little archaeology project uh, right in the middle of our campus when we were doing construction and unearthed colonial artifacts. Uh, so regardless of what you're interested in, regardless of what you're thinking about majoring in, you'll definitely be able to have that kind of hands-on experience uh, really as soon as you want, even in the first semester of your freshman year. Now, in addition to all of that, uh, of course, you are going to have plenty of options when it comes to fun and entertainment on campus. With about 500 student clubs, about 18 or 20 of those being Greek life, uh, there are plenty of options for our students to get involved in. Um, that ranges all the way from blacksmithing to the aviation club, or maybe you wanted to uh, get involved with our cheese club, which is in fact the largest club on campus, uh, which I always think just gives a unique insight to the quirkiness of William & Mary students. Uh, again, campus is the heart and soul of our community. It's where everyone wants to be, and that's probably why 75% of students stay on campus for all four years. Uh, now, we do require that all first and second year students live on campus. Uh, you do have the option to move off later in your time if you so choose, uh, but you're more than welcome to stay on for all four years. Now, right on the edge of campus, we have Merchant Square. So if you need to get away even just a few feet, uh, you can always run to those cafes, restaurants, boutiques, cute little coffee shops, all of that. Uh, but don't worry, our you know, beautiful traditional colonial architecture will always be there to welcome you home. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out. In addition, definitely check out our website, www.wm.edu. Uh, we have virtual tours, all sorts of virtual events, including for students by student panels. Uh, so definitely check us out. If you have any questions, again, www.wm.edu. And again, thank you so much for spending your evening with all of us. We, we really appreciate it. You're muted. Yeah, I was very much on mute. <laughs> okay, um, thank you panelists, thank you students. Um, after you close this window, there'll be a quick four question survey and we appreciate any feedback you may have. This is just one of the many sessions that we're having, as I said before, so please sign up for more. Um, and also in about a week, you'll be able to find the sessions recording as well as all the other sessions recordings on StriveScan. Um, so once again, thank you for your time and have a good rest of your night.